Turn right? Well, maybe not so much. The cost to produce a penny is on the rise again. You know, the U.S. Mint spends, ready for this, 1.5 cents, so a penny and a half to make each one of them. It's the first time costs have been up since 2011. Many experts say, though, it's doubtful the penny's cost will ever sink back below what is it is actually worth. I still love those pennies. Yeah, and it's still good luck if you find one, yes. right? Okay. Well, 2016 looks to end on a snowy note for much of the Northeast as a massive snowstorm looks to blanket most of New England and the Great Lakes. So let's bring in Janice Dean, who is standing by in the Weather Center to let us know if it's going to snow on our New Year's Day parade. No, that's the good news. We will get this system out of the way before New Year's Eve, I promise. Current temperatures, I mean, this time yesterday, we were talking about 58 in New York City. The temperature has dropped to 40, 52 in Raleigh, and we've got that cold air sinking in behind this next storm system that is going to be on the move tomorrow and into Friday. So this is the radar around this time on Thursday, mainly a rain event along the coast, okay, because the temperature is going to be too warm. Interior sections, though, could get quite a bit of snow, especially northern New England. So with us all day tomorrow, uh, rain and wind and snow, it's going to be nasty, unfortunately, for the morning commute along the I-95 corridor. And then it's out of here by Friday. Forecast precipitation, again, mainly rain, Jersey southward, Long Island, I think it's going to be a rain event. But again, interior sections, the mountains uh, in West Virginia, you could get snow. And then the bullseye, we think, northern New England, which you could get upwards of a foot or a foot and a half. Wind gusts, as this storm gets wound up along the coast, really strong. I mean, close to hurricane force winds along the coast. So that's going to be a problem, especially with blowing snow. Just be aware, listen to your local forecasts if you live, especially in New England. Winter weather advisories are posted for a lot of areas here where we think you're going to get hit the hardest. But the good news is for Eric and Kimberly, who are going to be outside in the elements with the hair blowing, um, uh, we are expecting cloudy skies. I'm going to make sure that the rain holds off. We could get a little bit of rain after midnight and 38 degrees, which actually isn't bad because look at this. The warmest New Year's, well, we're not going to get that 58, but the coldest was one with a wind chill back in 1997 of minus 21. So that's pretty good, I have to say. That's wow. a good forecast. Yeah, not bad. But you know, it's not a party if Janice Dean isn't there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They never called me. <laughs> well, they might be Do now. they not know about my dance moves? Uh, exactly. Who could not know about that? <laughs> right, Janice, thank you. You got it. Well, in just about an hour from now, we will be hearing from Secretary of State John Kerry, set to lay out a speech about the Obama administration's vision for Middle East peace. Will it do anything to cool off the tensions that have erupted between the U.S. and Israel? Wouldn't a deal on car insurance involve two parties discussing something? Why not give you some say or let your driving do the talking? Liberty Mutual Right Track finally puts you in control with savings of up to 30%, with an initial discount just for signing up. Take control of your rates. Visit a local office or call Liberty Mutual today at 1 888 663 3155. Liberty stands with you. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Everybody has a flashlight, but can your flashlight do this? Or how about this? The Bell & Howell Tactical Flashlight can. Similar to flashlights used by elite military units, the Bell & Howell Tac Light can do things no ordinary flashlight can do. It's so bright it can be seen up to two nautical miles away. And if that something that goes bump in the night turns out to be someone, only a tac light has a super bright strobe that can stun and disorient would-be attackers. A car battery will stop working in sub-zero temperatures, but even getting frozen in a block of ice couldn't make our tack light stop working. And it'll keep working when fully submerged in water, even 212 degree boiling water. It's tough enough to survive getting run over by a Humvee. Try that with a regular flashlight. Compact and lightweight, it goes where you go. So you can feel safe in dark places at night, or just have the right light for emergency situations. And there's never been a better choice for camping, fishing, or hunting. What else? Five preset modes. It's made of high-grade aircraft aluminum. The bulb lasts 100,000 hours. I mean, there's just nothing like it on the market today. But this offer won't last long, so here's how to get yours. 
Tactical flashlights of this quality are selling right now for $60 or more, but Bell & Howell has slashed their price to just $19.99, and they'll even ship it to you free. Plus, every tack light comes with a lifetime guarantee. And that's not all. Order today and you can get a second tack light. Just pay a separate fee. You can get two Bell & Howell tack lights backed by a lifetime guarantee for the amazing price of just $19.99 and get free shipping. Here's how to order. To get your tack light for only $19.99 and get a second one free, call 1 800 923 7541 or go to trytacklight.com. This offer is not available in stores. Call 1 800 923 7541. That's 1 800 923 7541 or order online at trytacklight.com. Outgoing Secretary of State John Kerry about to lay out his vision for peace in the Middle East. Days after the Obama administration allows a U.N. resolution condemning Israeli settlements. Welcome to a brand new hour of America's Newsroom. I'm Heather Childers in for Martha McCallum. And good to be with you as always, yeah. Heather. And hello everyone, I'm Eric Sean in this morning for Bill Hammer. With well, Secretary Kerry about to deliver that speech on Israeli-Palestinian relations and the conflict, outlining a path toward a potential two-state solution. Of course, in the wake of that controversial United Nations Security Council vote that did spark such tension. Israel now bracing for yet another potential clash with the Obama administration in the final weeks before President-elect Donald Trump takes office. Rich Edson is live for us at the State Department. Uh, Rich, what do we expect to hear from Secretary Kerry? And good morning, Heather. And with only about three weeks to go in office, the Secretary of State will deliver what he believes should be the next steps in a Middle East peace process. This, as the incoming administration and the Obama administration's successor, have a very different view on how things should be going in the Middle East. Uh, State Department officials say there is a recognition and international opinion that Israelis... Uh, settlement activity is uh, an impediment, as they say, to a negotiated two-state solution. The Obama administration has been defending its actions since Friday when it allowed a U.N. Security Council vote to pass that condemned Israel on those settlements. This was a resolution that we could not, in good conscience, uh, veto uh, because it condemns violence, it condemned incitement. It reiterates uh, what has long been the overwhelming consensus, uh, international view on settlements, and it calls for the parties to take constructive steps to advance a two-state solution on the ground. So we expect a further defense of that uh, abstaining of a vote that would allow and did allow uh, that resolution to pass the U.N. Security Council. Uh, the U.S. and the Obama administration have been making the point that it's been the longstanding position of the United States that settlement activity beyond the 1967 borders undermines Israel's security. The administration also makes the point that it has criticized the Palestinians for failing to further condemn terrorism, Heather. And there's new reaction this morning from President-elect Donald Trump. Uh, there is, and we're seeing an aligning here of uh, the Israeli position and the government of Benjamin Netanyahu lining up with the incoming administration and against the current U.S. administration and the United Nations. This is from Donald Trump via Twitter just a short while ago. He says, we cannot continue to let Israel be treated with such total disdain and disrespect. They have used... Uh, they used to have a great friend in the United States, but not anymore. The beginning of the end was the horrible Iran deal, and now this UN, stay strong Israel, January 20th, is fast approaching. The State Department is also, in this administration, rejecting claims from the Israelis that it orchestrated that vote at the UN Security Council. simply says it read the language, it was pushed by the Egyptians and Palestinians, and decided not to vote either way after it saw the language. Heather, back to you. All right, Rich Edson, live for us. Thank you, Rich. We know, Heather, Israeli officials are already voicing their concerns about the Secretary's speech in just under an hour from now. And what he may say about a Palestinian state. You know, in the last hour of America's newsroom, Israeli Ambassador, UN Ambassador Danny Dignan, told us the resolution, in his view, was completely one-sided, and he said that talk should only take place directly between the parties and not at the United Nations. As for officials in Jerusalem, John Huddy now joins us from our Middle East Bureau there with their reaction. Hi, John. Well, hey, Eric. Yeah, a senior Israeli official told me that Israel expects uh, more moves, he said, at the U.N., possibly even a U.S. resolution preempting Israeli-Palestinian peace talks and also setting uh, conditions 
on those talks. Now, this senior Israeli official also uh, told me that reports about a meeting and the minutes from that meeting between Secretary of State John Kerry, U.S. National Security Advisor Susan Rice, and Palestinian negotiator Sayyab Erekat tallies with the information he says that Israel has and that he also added it's just the tip of the iceberg as far as U.S. Palestinian collusion. He also told me he's seen uh, sensitive material and information proving without a doubt that the Obama administration was involved in the uh, orchestration and crafting of the resolution, something, as mentioned previously, that State Department officials continue to deny and challenge. And Sayyab Erekat, the Palestinian negotiator, did confirm that he met with Secretary of State Kerry earlier this month in Washington, D.C., but that the minutes of that meeting being reported uh, in uh, in the Egyptian press by a news agency there are a fabrication, he says, and State Department officials contend there was never a tripartite meeting. But again, according to these reports, Eric, the U.S. delegation told Erdogan that the U.S. would be willing to cooperate with the Palestinians at the U.N. if the resolution condemning Israel's settlements would be a balanced one. So Israeli officials, needless to say, Eric, will be closely watching Secretary of State carry speech and perhaps an indication of uh, what's to come in it, Eric. All right, John, and, and the U.N. Uh, Israeli ambassador also told us, in his view, nothing happens at the Security Council without the United States uh, knowledge. So we'll see what the secretary has to say just under an hour from now. Thank you. Heather? Right. The administration has created a uh, global chaos. The world is on fire wherever you look, north, south, east and west. Instead of following the Hippocratic Oath for the last month of their administration, the do no harm promise, <laughs> what do they do? They throw gasoline on the fire and they, they side with everybody else who really is using the United Nations to execute a form of veiled anti-Semitism. There's nothing else that you can describe this as. Mm, National security analyst Sebastian Gorka, some strong words there, accusing the Obama administration of trying to undo nearly 40 years of U.S. policy toward Israel in one single stroke. Molly Hemingway is the senior editor of The Federalist, and she joins us now with her own opinion. You also have some strong words. You go a step further, calling it moral cowardice. Yeah, the move at the UN uh, abstaining in order to allow this action to take place against Israel is a perfect coda to eight years of foreign policy bungling by the Obama administration. And the gasoline reference works. President Obama has thrown gasoline on the, on this fire in the Middle East, and with his last month, it looks like he's lighting a match and tossing it over his shoulder as he walks away. There are so many problems with what happened at the UN on Friday, and it's looking like that might not be the end of it. And so I think it's very important that we look, when we listen to John Kerry's speech, we think about exactly what actions are being taken, not just how he talks about Israel. And, well, on that point, what do you expect to hear from the Secretary of State in what, just about an hour from now? Yeah, and what, again, going back to what happened at the UN on Friday, Samantha Power gave a speech that was very powerful and sounded like it was in support of Israel. She condemned the UN, she condemned the Security Council for taking more actions against Israel this year than they have against North Korea, Sudan, uh, and Syria, and all sorts of other bad actors combined. Yeah, 20, 20 anti-Israel resolutions in 2016 alone, and just four others for other parts of the world total. Right, but a lot of rhetoric doesn't matter. What we need to do is look at what the U.S. is actually doing at the U.N. And so I, I imagine John Kerry will have a lot of good words to say about Israel. He'll have a lot of condemnation for Israel's enemies. But if the Obama administration is using this last month in power to take action against Israel to you know, promote sanctions or uh, hurt U.S. groups that are helping Israel to come out with a speech that kneecaps Israel's ability to negotiate, that's more important than whatever he says in this speech. So yeah. it'll be very interesting to see exactly how it goes down. And there are some parties saying that there is evidence, strong evidence, that the U.S. Um, colluded with Palestine on this latest vote. Uh, do you believe that to be true? 
Well, and on one hand, it doesn't matter. What matters is what we know happened publicly. If the U.S. didn't want this to happen, if the Obama administration didn't want this to happen, they had every reason to keep it from happening and every ability to keep it from happening. So all you really need to know is that they let it happen. At the same time, it is, it's becoming increasingly obvious that there were actions taken by the U.S. They're denying that they had this meeting with Saeed Erekat. Well, the meeting is still, there's a notice on the, on the State Department website that it took place. Palestinian officials have confirmed that they had meetings with John Kerry and and um, Rice and so I mean don't they, the US should not be denying that these things took place when they're still public about it on the website yeah and not denying also saying that the resolution that they could not veto it because amongst other things it you know condemns violence and there are many things that are in that resolution that are fine. There are also things that go against 40 years of U.S. policy that say things that are diametrically opposed to what we have what we have agreed upon for 40 years. And we've been able to get a lot of concessions out of Israel for the last 40 for the last 25 years in exchange for saying we will never allow something like this to happen. We will never allow uh, the U.N. to say that the Western Wall is occupied territory that Jews have no right to. And so it doesn't matter how many good things there are in this resolution if it violates U.S. policy if it violates the Oslo Accord, Accords, if it get, gets rid of bilateral uh, negotiation mm -hmm. agreements, that's, that's far worse than anything nice it says. All right, so I'll just ask you this question. Is this personal? Is this personal between uh, President Obama, Netanyahu, and the President-elect, Donald Trump? It does seem that there has been a lot of animosity between President Obama and Netanyahu. He has been, President Obama, uh, fr right from when he took office, actually has been kind of involved in trying to hurt Netanyahu politically. And it does seem like he is d taking action against Netanyahu in a way that goes against so many other democratic policy priorities uh, it's it's very confusing to see why he is doing it particularly since it only seems to help netanyahu who has long claimed that that obama has something out for him and it also helps donald trump uh, so it's a very very much a shooting yourself in the foot type uh, uh, departure yeah. from office interesting uh, thank you so much molly always enjoy hearing from you and your take on on issues uh, molly thank hemingway you. joining us thank you well, Heather, we will have much more on U.S. policy and Israel and the pending action we're told that the U.S. will take against Russia for the election hacking. We will be joined by Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham just about 20 minutes from now. They are traveling in the Baltic states and they will join us live from Latvia. Very interesting mm -hmm. to hear from them. And some left-wing activists are organizing a last-ditch effort, another one to stop President-elect Trump from taking office. There's already talk about uh, mass demonstrations during the inauguration in Washington. They're talking about storming, that's a word they use, the uh, offices in Capitol Hill. Look, you can refinance and pull cash out of your house with absolutely no closing costs. Why are you paying high interest rates for a car loan, credit card, or anything else you can think of? Your house is your bank. Make the cash call at 855-890-CASH. Each of these food boxes represents a gift of life for people here in Israel who are in desperate need. These are very difficult times for Israel and the Jewish people as the government spends more and more of its resources for battling terrorism. Every week, more and more people come and you can see the desperation for food. This $25 food box will provide one desperately needy family here in Israel with food, with hope, and with a note inside each of these saying that it's from Christians and Jews in America who seek to bless them. Israel and its people need your help now. You can make a life-changing difference by calling and saying that you will give a $25 food box to help a family in need in Israel. Thank you, and God bless you for your support. If you could be more heart healthy just by drinking a glass of earthy vegetable juice daily, would you do it? Probably not. But what if this performance enhancing veggie was transformed into a great tasting circulation superfood drink? It's called Super Beets and I can help you try it risk free. See, Super Beets helps boost your body's nitric oxide levels and that helps increase your energy and stamina. It supports healthy blood pressure too. I, I noticed a difference the first day. You'll feel the difference in your energy in as little as 20 minutes. That's guaranteed. And then I started taking Super Beets and I immediately felt 
like I was 10 years younger. With your first paid order of Super Beats, you'll receive four fantastic free bonuses, a full 30-day bonus supply of Super Beats, two free nitric oxide indicator strips to measure your results before and after using it, plus a free book. With this special TV offer, you'll get free shipping too. Call 1-800-590-6319, 1-800-590-6319, or go to GetSuperBeats.com. I was out of the dating scene for quite a while, being married, having kids. Now I'm looking for an adult to share my time with. Hi, DJ. Hi, Phil. Join the thousands getting back out there on the fastest growing dating site for people over 50. Start for free today at OurTime.com. We have an update now on that story we brought you yesterday. Now eight teenagers are facing charges after that fight broke out at a mall in Illinois. <laughs> Man, oh man, was there mayhem when about a thousand kids showed up at the Fox Valley Mall in Aurora. And it got so violent at one point that police had to actually evacuate shoppers for a brief time. A police officer and a mall security guard were injured. Police are now investigating whether this brawl was connected to all those similar fights around the country that apparently were spurred by social media. Well, progressive filmmaker Michael Moore now organizing resistance by left-wing activist against President-elect Donald Trump, outlining steps to challenge his leadership even before he takes office. Joining us now, Joe Trippi, former Howard Dean campaign manager and a Fox News contributor and former uh, Carly Fiorina deputy campaign manager, Sarah Isger Flores, a former spokeswoman for the RNC and a fellow at the Harvard Institute of Politics. Thank you both for joining us. Great to be here. Good morning. So, Joe, I'll start with you. They're not done yet. Michael Moore now outlining these five steps. It's still not prepared to accept that Donald Trump is the president-elect. Well, there's, this isn't a whole lot different than Mitch McConnell saying that his one job now was to make Obama a one-term president or, or even Donald Trump uh, leading the birther movement to, to, to challenge uh, whether Barack Obama was even even eligible to be president after he was elected president. So I mean, you're going to have, you know, welcome to polarized America. This is, uh, it's been increasing, uh, but it's been going on for quite a while. And of course, just as there were people who believed Obama's election was a threat to their way of life and uh, the values they had for where the country should go, the same is going to be yeah. true with Donald Trump's uh, 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 election when he's a. Uh, uh, and you're going to have a reaction from the left and with Democrats. And uh, there are going to be plenty uh, who fight uh, every yeah. part of his agenda, just as there were many Republicans who fought every part of Obama's. Sarah, do you think that it's the same thing? I mean, I don't seem to recall when President Obama took office the same amount of pushback happening. And refusal well, to, there refusal to no accept. Question. Yeah, I mean, Republicans accepted that Barack Obama won the election. What I think is amazing about Michael Moore's statements, though, is, gosh, does he want Republicans to pick up more seats in the Senate in 2018? Because that is a great plan to allow us to win those states. There's 10 uh, Democrats up for re-election who are sitting in states that Donald Trump won. And this is after Democrats have doubled, tripled down on their identity politics, far left-wing progressive plans that cost them you know, a thousand state legislative seats, 12 governorships, nine Senate seats, and now we're going to pick up more in 2018 if they really think that blocking the confirmation of someone like Jeff Sessions, um, you know, again, mm -hmm. primarying some of these uh, moderate Democrats, th great, Michael Moore, by all means, please <laughs> give us more Senate seats. And, and Joe, that is actually some of the things that he's calling for. Specifically, he says, if your representative is a Democrat, tell him or her that you expect them to aggressively fight the Trump agenda. And if they don't, uh, you will work with others to support a true progressive in the Democratic primary in 2018. So do you think that's the answer for turning things around for Democrats? Well, Michael Moore's one voice out there. Uh, he's got a big megaphone, but uh, just as Donald Trump did, uh, had one for the birther movement. I mean, look, you, you know, they're going to be, uh, part of what happens when you lose an election is there's going to be a, you know, fight over the direction of the Democratic Party. You're seeing that at the DNC. Uh, there was a, a brief one over the leadership in the, in the House of Representatives with Nancy Pelosi. And we'll see how things come out. But in the end, uh, a lot of things that people are saying now are the same things we were all saying about uh, uh, Republicans at the end of, uh, you know, as, as Obama got elected, mm -hmm. uh, that they weren't going to 
be able to come back and win the House or the Senate, and guess what? You know, I mean, it, it, it just, that two years, even two years with Donald Trump as president, it's going to be a long time from now. We'll see whether he delivers or not and where, where people are vis-a-vis -vis those uh, Senate think, elections and other Joe, elections that are coming I'm sorry on. to interrupt you, but don't you think when President Obama took office initially that people gave him an opportunity, especially the outgoing president, gave him an opportunity to get things moving, to see how he could work on things, bring the, company, or bring the country together, and that's clearly not happening with Democrats and their refusal to accept that Donald Trump won the election. Yeah. Let's move forward now and give him a chance. Uh, Even President Obama I, I don't refusing to say that he'll step back for a little bit. I don't agree exactly. with that at all. Well, I think a lot of people, most, mo no wait, most people did. But the fact is that what happened here was that, that there were plenty of Republicans who did not. And that's the same thing that's going to happen here on the Democratic side. I'm sorry. All right, Sarah, go ahead. <laughs> Sure. I mean, there weren't recounts. There weren't calls in the Electoral College not to certify Barack Obama's election. But more to the point, Republicans did soul searching after 20, uh, 2008 and 2012 that allowed them to talk about how they could move forward and really land our policies and our ideas in Americans' uh, lives. And the Democrats instead are in total denial, the sense of entitlement that they have, that they're so much smarter and that why aren't people just voting for them? It's not going to work. And they've doubled down on it with Nancy Pelosi. Harry Reid's out there saying there's no line he wouldn't cross to win an election. And he's proud of the fact he lied about Mitt Romney's tax returns. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they're going to continue that, they're going to continue losing, which is what we've seen over and over again since Barack Obama took office. The Democratic Party is now at the lowest level that it's been since pre-1940s. They're doing something wrong. They just won't admit it. Yeah. And they won't admit it to themselves. Calling for protests at the inauguration, calling for an alternate concert to be aired uh, at the same time. Uh, we will see if both sides can eventually come together. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Good to be Thanks. with you, Heather. Well, you know, Heather, emergency response is all about reaction time. And coming up, we will tell you how cell phones are costing 911 dispatchers vital seconds. Plus, a massive explosion dealing a major blow to one city's economy. Do you tell yourself, today's the day, I'm going to lose the weight? but nothing changes. Well, today's the day. Just call Nutrisystem. I'm Brian, and I've lost 75 pounds on Nutrisystem. I'm Chris, and I lost 120 pounds on Nutrisystem. Lose 15 pounds and 7 inches overall in your first month. Lose weight fast. Money back guarantee. I got to eat my favorite food. I got to eat, and I got to eat a lot. Nutrisystem for men is the real deal with real food that gets real results. Order your 28-day program right now and get all new Nutri-Crush bars to crush cravings free and one week of Turbo Shop to bust that gut free. Nutrisystem just gave me my life back. These guys are just like you. They made the call and they got the results. Lose weight, boost energy, improve your health with Nutrisystem for men. Call or go online in the next two minutes and we'll throw in FedEx shipping free. Lose 15 pounds and 7 inches overall in your first month. Make the call now. Go online or call 877-380-SIZE right now and get Nutrisystem for men with bars and shakes free. Having my mom around to help with my daughter means the world to me, so I got her a smartphone. Amanda, I'm out front, honey. It's the all-new Jitterbug Smart from Great Call. It's got one of the biggest, brightest screens, and with the built-in 5-star app, I know she can always get help. One touch and you'll be immediately connected to a highly trained agent who can confirm your location, assess the situation, and get you the help you need. Service starts as low as $17.48 a month. Available at Best Buy, Rite Aid, or Sears. Tackling the stories you care about and the hot button issues critical to you. No one covers it like Tucker Carlson tonight. Most watched, most trusted. Your satellite TV cut out again. And this time, it's not the weather. It's the family of hawks nesting in your satellite dish. And it looks like mom just got home. Too bad you don't have Spectrum like the Johnsons next door, who are enjoying reliable TV service in their living room, while you try and reason with a very unreasonable bird. Get the bird bypassing reliability of Spectrum TV. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? 
You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-869-0400 or go to mesoonly.com. There's no obligation, so call toll-free at 1-800-869-0400. Well, the factory in Cleveland, Ohio, just out of sight of Tulsa, uh, destroyed in an explosion. Two men were hurt in this blast, but there's no word on how serious their injuries are. Firefighters battled the flames for hours. This was overnight. They expect the building to be a total loss. The incident is now under investigation. Well, there's apparently a deadly flaw in 911's response system. You know, if you're calling from a cell phone, there apparently is no guarantee the dispatchers will know exactly where you are. Operators often say they receive inaccurate locations, and of course that could waste precious time. Jonathan Surrey is live in Atlanta with more on this concern. Hi, Jonathan. Yeah, it's strange, Eric, because we're so used to the GPS on our phones providing accurate locations for apps ranging from Facebook to Uber, but it's a different story when you call 911. Many of those emergency calls from wireless phones are misrouted to the wrong 911 center. Our most important question is, what is the location of your emergency? Current technology uses cell towers to determine where you are, but the tower your phone pings may be miles away or even in another jurisdiction. I'm going to have to transfer you to the city of Roswell, okay, because you're outside of our jurisdiction. We conducted a test call standing inside the Alpharetta 911 center, where there were at least three misdirected calls in the two hours we were there. 911, what is the address of your emergency? This is Jonathan Sarah with Fox News doing a test. Can you tell me what address is showing up on your computer? Currently, I'm only showing your cell tower location, which is at 3129 Old Milton Parkway. More than a mile away from where I was standing, so we conducted a second test using technology from the startup Laser 911. Can you please tell me the address that just popped up on your screen? And this time the 911 operator pinpointed our exact location immediately. Your phone is very good at understanding where it is. So we let the phone do its work. It tells our system where it is and then our system utilizes the cellular network just to transmit the voice and data necessary to complete the call. Now, the Federal Communications Commission estimates that even a one-minute improvement in response time to mobile callers would save more than 10,000 lives a year. The agency's mandating that by the year 2021, 80 percent, at least 80 percent of wireless calls must provide accurate dispatchable locations. And although that would be an improvement over the status quo, even then, it still allows for one in five mobile callers to fall through the cracks. Eric? You know, Jonathan, that's really important for us to remember if you're on the cell phone to tell the operator your location. Fascinating that they don't That's always one know. of the first questions that they ask. 911, what is your location? And when we're out, out and about, we don't, we're not always aware of our surroundings, but one of the best things you can do is keep an idea of a nearby address. So if you were in an emergency, you'd be able to give the dispatcher an idea of how to find you. Great advice to remember. Jonathan Surrey, of course, thank you. Heather? Coming up, a warning for Russia as the White House prepares sanctions against Moscow following cyber attacks interfering with the U.S. election. Straight ahead, Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham will join us live from Latvia. What they say should be done about Russia's interference up next. There will be bipartisan sanctions coming that will hit Russia hard, particularly Putin as an individual. Knowing the relationship between Latvia and Russia, you can expect some economic pain. It will be true in America, but freedom is worth suffering pain. It is now time for Russia to understand enough is enough. Say goodbye to 2016 and bring in the new year with the Fox News Channel. We're live from the heart of Times Square, bringing celebrations all around the country, hearing from the people, the biggest musical performances, and your favorite Fox personalities. Kimberly Kilfoyle and Eric Bowling host live, and so much more. New Year's Eve. 
Our must-see coverage starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on Fox News Channel. It's our Joseph A. Bank after Christmas sale. Save up to 70% on everything in the store, including all sweaters, outerwear, dress shirts, and more. Plus, all suits are just $199, and all sport coats are just $149. Plus, all clearance is an extra 50% off. The after Christmas sale, only at Joseph A. Bank. Tired of food getting stuck to your pan? Sick of scraping and scrubbing? And when your meal won't fit, you just want to quit. Well, I've got the solution. Hi, Kathy Mitchell here with my new Red Copper Square Dance Pan. This is not your grandmother's old griddle. No scratches equals no sticking. Everything dances right off. The square design means you can fit more bacon or more burgers perfectly. And the high sides prevent grease from spilling out. Non-stick and no scratches. Try this. Dump in tater tots, then add cheese, any breakfast meat, and cover with eggs. Top it with biscuits and pop it in the oven. Yes, it's oven safe up to 500 degrees. And look, everything you want for breakfast and no extra pans to clean. Even make 16 sliders at once. You can't do that in a round pan. Infused with pure copper and thanks to anti-scratch technology, it resists the toughest punishment. Swirl cheesecake into brownie mix with a metal fork and create this delicious dessert. Even a bacon crust Hawaiian pizza slides right out. Love pancakes? Here's a trick. Drop a little water in the pan. When it dances, you know it's hot and ready to cook. Like these ooey gooey chocolate chip pancakes. No sticking ever. Square Dance works on any stovetop, even induction. Got leftovers? Use tortillas. Add meat, beans, and cheese. Fold like this. Top with lettuce, tomatoes, sour cream, and salsa. Salsa? Try my Square Dance pan and you'll be dancing all day. Plus, it's dishwasher safe. Similar griddles have lower sides and can cost $70, but call now and get my Red Copper Square Dance Pan for just $19.99. Plus, get my Quick Meals and Desserts recipe book free. If Red Copper ever fails, we'll replace it, guaranteed. But wait, you can double the offer and receive a second set. Just pay a separate fee. That's two Red Copper Square Dance Pans, an incredible value. Call now. Call 1-800-303-7868 to get your Square Dance Pan. Call now or go to squaredancepan.com. So call 1-800-303-7868. That's 1-800-303-7868. Order now. Everything your family touches sticks with them. Make sure the germs they bring home don't stick around. Use Clorox disinfecting products. Because no one kills germs better than Clorox. Welcome back. Uh, the second flight recorder of the Russian military plane that crashed into the Black Sea has been recovered. The first was discovered yesterday and is already being analyzed. Now, the aircraft carrying 92 people went down on Sunday, two minutes after taking off. Memorials for the crash victims are growing. People paying their respects outside the headquarters of the Alexandrov Ensemble Choir, which lost several singers in that crash. Well, a federal appeals court in Washington reviving two lawsuits calling on Hillary Clinton to hand over more emails related to that private server that she used while Secretary of State. The former Democratic nominee forked over some 54,000 pages of emails back in 2014, but deleted thousands of others. For more on this, let's bring in Matthew Continetti. He is the editor-in-chief at the Washington Free Beacon. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. So what do you think about this latest move and what does this mean will happen next? Well, it shows you the email scandal is the scandal that will never die. Uh -huh. uh, thanks to the uh, D.C. Uh, Circuit Court of Appeals, it looks like it will last even into the Trump administration. The court basically saying that the Secretary of State has the uh, pow uh, power to ask the Attorney General to use basically the FBI and other uh, law enforcement techniques to recover whatever emails may be left on that private server. Now, the Clinton people say that they gave out everything that they didn't delete, right? But um, still some people, including Judicial Watch, which was behind this very successful lawsuit, uh, saying, no, we need to do everything we can to figure out if there are any emails yet to be released to the public. But then it would be left up to the uh, future Attorney General, correct? correct, who may very well be uh, Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama in the coming year. Now it's interesting because this puts the incoming Trump administration in a 
novel place, Heather, because if you recall on his thank you tour just a couple weeks ago, President-elect Trump said, uh, when the crowd started chanting, lock her up, President-elect Trump said, well, we don't really care about that anymore, do we? So it will be a political question uh, that the President and, um, well, uh, Secretary of State Tillerson, if he's confirmed, as well as, as Attorney General Sessions, if he's confir confirmed, will have to decide whether to press the case uh, to see whether we really did get all of Hillary Clinton's emails from that private server. But do you think that uh, the president-elect was saying, you know, in fact, that this is over and done with, or was he really moving it forward and saying that it will be up to the attorney general and would move in that direction instead? Sure, it's hard to, hard to say um, what exactly he meant, but I know that it will come up in discussions when he's the president, and of course, uh, he'll probably want to have a say. And it's, you know, it, it, is a, it was a large part of his campaign, getting to the bottom of what was in those emails. And so I actually think his instincts would probably be to allow uh, Attorney General Sessions to continue to pursue the case. Mm -hmm. What do you think should happen? Uh, should it be over and done with? No, I think in the interest of transparency, we should probably fi uh, find as many of the emails as possible. Now, it, it could well be the case, as the Clinton team says, that they handed over everything that they didn't delete, all the emails about yoga that they say they deleted. Uh, but you never can tell, and the record of this administration in particular, as we see just uh, today in, in the course of them denying meetings uh, with Palestinian officials that are up on the, their own website. Uh, when you think about this administration in particular, you want to have uh, due diligence and make sure that uh, every avenue is pursued to uh, achieve what, the goal that you're pursuing, which is, in this case, finding whether there are any emails left hidden. Yeah, and is that really the larger issue when it comes to, you know, the administrations, be it the Obama administration or be it the uh, Trump administration moving forward, that need for openness, that need for honesty and for people to think that, you know, their leaders are being honest with them? Absolutely, and I think uh, this issue of honesty is one reason why Hillary Clinton lost the campaign. Now, there is one danger for President-elect Trump here. He doesn't want his govern government bogged down in, in the email investigation. He doesn't want his attorney general bogged down in that investigation because he has so many other uh, uh, pursuits to um, to go after, and including reform of the Justice Department, as well as uh, President-elect Trump's larger agenda. All right, so let's just kind of uh, play that we know what will be found. Let's say that there are more incriminating emails found. Then what should happen? Well, then I think you have the really tough decision, and there I think that President-elect Trump is probably inclined not to pursue any uh, criminal charges against uh, Hillary Clinton. We should remember, though, of course, there are several other probes into the Clintons uh, ongoing, at, uh, including into the foundation. Mm -hmm. So th this, this again, we, just when you think that the Clintons may be out of public life because of uh, the drubbing that Hillary took in the polls in November, uh, no, they won't be going no. away. And in fact, all of these investigations remain uh, on the table for President-elect Trump. All right. Matthew Continetti, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, have a happy new year. You too. Well, the White House looking to punish Russia for hacking the U.S. election. Coming up, we'll talk to Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham about what they think should be done. Plus, there's this. It was so foolish to think I could find Luke and bring him home. Why, oh, yes. Don't do that. Do what? Anything. Princesses. I'm trying to be helpful. <laughs> when did that ever help? And don't say the Death Star. Americans mourning the loss of iconic Star Wars princess Carrie Fisher. Fisher died yesterday at the age of 60. We'll tell you how her castmates are remembering her. What do you do when a car has been named to Car and Driver's 10 Best a record 31 times? You make another one. Say hello to the Accord Hybrid. With 212 horsepower and a 49 MPG city rating, it's the most powerful and fuel efficient in its class. Drive away with great deals at the Happy Honda Days sales event on now. 
You love the outdoors, but nothing spoils a cold weather adventure faster than cold, sweaty feet. You wear insulated boots and thick socks, but no matter how you try, you can't keep your feet warm and dry. Stop cold, sweaty feet with 35 Below, the amazing socks developed with aerospace fabric technology to keep feet warm and dry in the coldest and most extreme conditions.